everyone. Welcome to the Fashion Experiment. I'm Dr. Bridget, your professor of all things fashion. And today I'm going to be covering the topic of fashion forecasting and color. Color is a really important part of forecasting fashion. You know, we wear colors as part of everything we put on to adorn ourselves, our accessories, our shoes, makeup, clothing, everything we wear uh, has color attached to it and color has meanings attached to them and feelings and moods that we express through color. So color has a lot. It says a lot. It does a lot. All right. So I want to share that I've been doing several videos related to uh, fashion forecasting. So if you haven't looked at uh, any previous videos, I encourage you to start with um, uh, fashion trends and influencing factors, fashion trends and trend elements. Those two videos really provide the foundation for um, understanding the process of predicting trends, all right? And there's several other videos you can check out on the channel. So today we're gonna discuss color, all right? So fashion trends and color. So as I said, color is part of fashion. You can't get away from it because everything we put on our bodies has a color attached to it. And meanings are attached to colors, feelings and moods are attached to colors. All right, so here on my slides, you see I have color is the number one artistic element that attracts consumers, that attracts us. Everybody is a favorite color, you know, a color that they know they look good in, a color that when they put it on, it just brightens their day, brightens them up, you know? And then the opposite is true, colors that you stay away from, like, ooh, that's not my color, or ooh, I don't like that color, you know? And it evokes a feeling from us. So. With that understanding, you know, professionals in the fashion industry understand that we can connect colors to trends, to garments, to our um, themes and inspirations that we've identified to help us express the theme. So if my theme is sunshiny day, you know, I'm going to attach bright, vibrant colors to all the garments that are part of my sunshiny day theme and collection, right? I'm not gonna attach drab, dark, ho-hum colors because that's not gonna express my sunshiny day theme, all right? So that's the idea. Once you've established your theme and I've done a theme video, so you have to go back and look at it to understand the colors that you attach to the theme express the mood and the feeling of the theme. So colors are not, you know, just randomly chosen. They're never randomly chosen. All right. Um, and I could say a lot about color that's running through my mind, but from a forecasting perspective, it's all about expressing the feeling and the mood associated with your theme. Okay. That is how you select your colors. Now, the fashion industry is a billion dollar industry. So we're in business to make money. So in addition to selecting colors that communicate the mood and feeling of the theme, I also need to select colors that I know are consistent with my target market and the season that I'm offering the product in. You know, there are other factors that you consider when you select your colors. And that is why I'm thinking of other things in my mind. That's why um, fashion professionals leave it up to professionals to do the forecasting because the forecasting companies do the research and they determine or they recommend, okay, what will be the popular color for the season. All right. So here I have on this slide, Pantone. Pantone is the foremost authority on color forecasting, okay? So there are fashion forecasting companies. WGSN is um, one of the top ones. Um, there's also Fashion Snoops and others. Pantone 
forecast colors. And they don't forecast colors just for the fashion industry. They forecast colors for the automobile industry, for interior design, any industry where um, color is a main driving force for a product, you know, for selling a product. Okay, another reason why color forecasting and the whole process of developing colors has to be standardized because it's a chemistry, okay? When you identify a color, so using my sunshiny day thing, and I say, okay, I want my, you know, my standout color to be a golden yellow, you know? So, you know, what is golden yellow? How do I get that exact shade or tint of color? And it's all about chemicals and mixing them together to get it, right? So you can't have, you know, manufacture A, manufacture D, all the way through the alphabet, manufacturing that, that yellow golden color and using their own formula because it's going to come out different, you know, each time. Or it, it just might not be exactly right. So the industry has standardized how colors are created, the chemistry behind it to get that shade, that tint, so that when I, as a, you know, fashion professional, I could be a product developer, I could be a designer, you know, my own showroom, but not my own collection. I could be a buyer going to visit manufacturers to place orders for finished products that I'm going to sell in a retail store, establishment, lots of different professionals coming to a manufacturer. Um, to purchase a product of a specific color. And when it is standardized, the process of developing colors is standardized, then there's no issue with whether you want to get that shade that you sh saw in the showroom or that shade, that tint of color that you saw, saw during the production process. It's a no brainer because it's a standardized process. The chemists in the lab, they're mixing what they mix to produce that exact shade of that golden yellow, it's gonna happen every time, regardless of whether I turn it into um, paint for interior for a home, paint for an automobile, um, dye to be used to dye finished products like fabrics and shoes, all those um, apparel items and accessories like that, mix of color that, you know, mix of ingredients is going to create a shade that's going to be used for lots of different products, you know, hard goods and soft goods on plastics, like I said, on fibers, all different materials. And you want that guarantee that it's going to be exactly the shade that you want. Okay. So I said a whole lot, but it's part of what happens in the industry. All right, so color is not just color. It's not just, ooh, I like that blue shirt. Give me that blue shirt. No, that blue shirt is a mix of 50 different chemicals to get that shade of blue, to make that fabric dye, to make that paint in that bucket can, can of paint in that bucket for your house, for your walls, you know. All right, so Pantone is it. So every year, Pantone being the fashion forecaster, color forecaster for the fashion industry introduces a color of the year. And there, there's a standalone color, but there's also a color palette, okay, that's introduced. And this is what I meant when I said recommendation. So they recommend, you know, a set of colors that will be trending for a particular season. So if you are a product developer, a designer, a buyer, you know, in the industry with clientele that's looking for what is trending for the season, you know, it makes sense to include that color palette as part of your color choices for that season, because you know that that color palette will be everywhere. You know, the godfather of color, you know, <laughs> tells you that this is the color palette for the season then that's the color palette for the season. And I'm not saying that you have to choose it, but if you are a retailer that is serving um, mass merchandise 
consumers, the consumers who are fashion followers, then you want to incorporate those colors because everybody will be using those colors because those are the chosen colors. And as much as you know, consumers like to say they want to be individuals and unique and different, most consumers, including me, are fashion followers. We just eat up whatever social media, pop culture, fashion industry tells us, hey, go get hot pink. Hot pink is the color for the season. And I'm like, oh, I need me a hot pink sweater. And so are you, right? So yes, for that reason, if you serve, like I said, mass merchandise, so you selling large sums of products to lots and lots of consumers. You're not like um, high-end couture designer that's serving a very niche, specific consumer group. If you're serving the masses, you give them what the industry says is popular for the season. Okay. So here are some colors that have been forecasted um, in recent years. So and there is, like I said earlier, colors are not just colors. Colors are used to communicate a theme, the feeling and emotions attached to a theme. So each one of these colors has a story. And I'm not going to go into all the story, but the story um, for me started in 2016. And and I can explain to you how it evolved to what it is today. So in 2016, you'll see there that there are two colors that were forecast. Let me see, is that no? Two colors that were forecasted in 2016. Um, a rose quartz there and a serenity. So it's just the pink and the blue. And in this particular year, Pantone called the year, the year of no middle. And it was really interesting to me because it was the first year I had seen Pantone forecast two colors. And the reason behind it is them making a bold statement to say, hey, in the fashion industry, we see a shift. We see a shift, the shift that we is now very apparent to us in the world, um, which was the theme that I discussed in my previous video, but I'll come to it in a minute. No middle means that the industry identified that we had always and still do now um, identify consumers based on gender. A male fashion week, men's fashion week, you know, women's fashion week, the men's department, the women's department. So the pink and the blue two colors um, were chosen just to bring that to our attention to say, hey, you know, do we need to address this? Do we need to look a little deeper into this and see that there are consumers that we aren't serving, you know, by um, being so focused on males and female gender, which is what we've always done traditionally. So it was a moment, you know, in the industry where we just acknowledged that there was no middle and there's a group of consumers who need a middle, all right? The non-binary consumers who don't want to be identified as male or female, or the consumers who are in transition and the traditional male look, the traditional female look does not fit their needs. There was no middle. And that was just, you know, really eye-opening. And as we progress from 2016 to where we are now, we see that the no middle consumer group has evolved and we are slowly but surely addressing that new consumer group, all right? So the other colors for 2017, 2018, 2019 really spoke to a message that we continue to um, reiterate, just the need to be free, just be, you know, genuinely be yourself, um, embrace yourself, express who you are, love who you are, you know, regardless of whether you fit into the existing molds that society has created for us, just be you, bloom, all right? So 2020, classic blue, um, we went through so much, still 
still recovering, you know, from this global pandemic that we've experienced in 2020. So the color classic blue was just that. Um, blue is considered to be the most popular um, favorite color of most people. Um, and it's just a color that can put you at ease because it's a calming color that blue shades, green shades are calming colors. And it's a dependable color. You know, you can always go grab your jeans. Just blue is just a good color for fabric and garments that are made from the fabrics, of course. All right, so that was the color for 2020, classic blue. All right, and then this is a collage that I made 2020, a year like no other, just to capture what the world experienced, what individually, you know, we've all experienced just a whole world just turned upside down at home. Many people just suffered, lost jobs, suffered loss. And it's like, you know, that classic blue, we just holding on to it, right? We need something to hold on to. So <laughs> I, I made the collage really just to capture what we experienced, like I said, because it's about a mood and a feeling. So remembering and still living in it, living through it, um, recalling what you experienced and the mood of it, because that's what color forecasting is about, connecting to feelings and moods, all right? So moving from 2020 to 2021, the um, Pantone forecasted two colors again, two colors again. So 2021, the two colors that were forecasted were associated with the feeling and mood of where the world was, right? Coming out of a global pandemic and all that people suffered, um, there were two perspectives, you know, the optimistic, sunny, brighter day tomorrow, that is the illuminating yellow, or the pessimistic, ho-hum, I don't know what's going to happen, ultimate gray, you know, and it's really real. You could all have those same feelings together simultaneously, all right, but that was the, the thinking behind the two colors again, and I, I can see a pattern where when these two colors are forecasted by Pantone, it's really just a call to attention really to say, hey, there's something going on here. We have to pay attention to it. And I think the same thing is happening here that happened in 2016. So forecast the two colors, illuminating. Tomorrow is a brighter day. You know, keep the hope, keep the faith. We will get out of it. We will be better in a better place, better off than we were before, right? And the ultimate gray, people who may be pessimistic and really don't know, can't see a brighter day. So what does that really mean for fashion? What does that mean? I, of course, don't exactly know, but I believe that what we experienced is going to put us back on the path to be more intentional about expressing ourselves, each individual person, and living our authentic self I'm not allowing the world, society, other people to define you and what you should be or who you should be. And I think people are really going to go even stronger to say, hey, I'm me. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you think. I'm going to be me. And the space for the no middle consumers is really going to grow and get larger and larger and larger. All right. So um, here are some predictions from WGSN for 2022. So 2022, uh, WGSN um, presented colors and the standout color is orchid pink. And this is the color palette. So you'll notice it's very bright, but bold bright, not like a cherry sunny bright like happy go lucky bright no it's like a see me here I am boldness all right and the black and white 
nice neutral colors, the black and white together is a bold statement. And that's really what I saw in the 22 palette. It's boldness. Um, and like I said, it's about just walking in your authentic self, just blooming to say, hey, I don't care what you think, what you say, here I am, I am me. Um, and you can see here um, on the, on my left side of the um, slide, the points that they highlighted. So choose tones with long-term appeal. The idea behind that is not to pick like faddish colors, colors that can be bold, but also mix in in the future with other color palettes that um, evolve. And then everything else is all about the theme, using colors to enhance your well-being, thinking locally and embracing joy. It's all about just living your life and being you, accepting you regardless of what people think, but making it known, you know, not shrinking away that I am here, I am me, and I'm fabulous. So isn't that, you know, a great mood and emotion to connect to the year ahead? And here's the color of the year that's forecasted, orchid flower, a nice pinky um, fuchsia-y color that is bold, like I said, I like it. So everybody, I hope you jo enjoyed this video on fashion trends and color. Make sure you check out more videos on my channel and I'll see you again for the next video. Bye.